The Christmas season of 1927 delivered an enormous present to the African-American community of Indianapolis, the opening of the Madam C.J. Walker Theater, a glamorous anchor of commerce and entertainment for Indiana Avenue's black patrons and talents. It was another sign that the avenue was the place to go for blacks in Indianapolis, and in the era of segregation, the only place. Walker had passed away in 1919, leaving her daughter to finish the magnificent structure that she had begun to develop. But at the dawn of the 1930s, two more entrepreneurs were building up the thriving life of the avenue. Brothers Denver and C. Ferguson were born in Brownsville, Kentucky in the late 1890s. Denver was a World War I veteran who moved to Indianapolis in 1919, followed shortly by his younger brother, C. In Indianapolis, they opened a print shop and eventually ventured into other money-making opportunities, using their profits to acquire property and start up new businesses. Nightclubs such as the Cotton Club, the Trianon Ballroom, Royal Palm Gardens, Sunset Terrace Ballroom, and the Ferguson Hotel all flourished under the leadership of the brothers in the early mid-20th century. They created jobs, provided venues for both local and touring national performers, and gave back to the community. They were also savvy enough to maintain generally good relations with law enforcement and city officials who often benefited financially from the very underworld activities they were supposed to be policing. The brothers' promotional ambitions expanded beyond Indianapolis when they created the Ferguson Brothers Booking Agency, filling a void left by the 1930 collapse of the Theater Owners Booking Association. TOBA, as it was known, had promoted performances by black entertainers throughout the 1920s. In its wake, the Ferguson Brothers' new organization sparked the rise of the so-called Chitlin Circuit, a network of African-American performance venues that some scholars see as a key element in the birth of rock and roll. The circuit became a safe and acceptable way for black artists to travel and perform across the South during racial segregation. It also extended into the East and Upper Midwest, including the Apollo Theater in New York and theaters in Chicago, Detroit, and other urban centers, as well as the Madam C.J. Walker Theater in Indianapolis. Sam Cooke, James Brown, and Ray Charles were just a few of the notable artists who paid their professional dues playing the Chitlin Circuit. Denver and C. Ferguson's businesses, including their booking agency, continued to prosper throughout the 1940s. They played a significant role in the development of Indianapolis's segregation-bound African-American community, and their boosting of the Chitlin circuit expanded performance opportunities for both homegrown talent and black musicians and entertainers all across America. Financial problems and health issues eventually took a mortal toll on the Ferguson's entrepreneurial empire. But even as the era of the Ferguson brothers waned, a new generation of future Indianapolis jazz greats was emerging that would write one of the most storied chapters of Indiana Avenue's history. Music